Hello, my name is Edmond Gamna, and on behalf of DW Consult, I want to welcome you to Tutorials on the Go. Our zeal here is to help transition people with zero, struggling, or shaky base in accounting to an expert position and to a place of confidence. It is also a platform to assist in the smooth studying of the ACC and ICA professional qualifications, as well as for any tertiary accounting discipline. All that is required of you is to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell as well to be part of the program. Tutorials on the Go. Bringing accounting to heart. Now, to this episode's lecture. Sale and leaseback. So here, a sale and leaseback transaction occurs when one entity, who is a seller, transfers an asset to another entity, who is a buyer, who then leases the asset back to the original seller and becomes a leasee. So the companies are required to account for the transfer contract and the lease applying IFRS 16. However, Consideration is first given to whether the initial sale of the transferred asset is a performance obligation as seen in IFRS 15, revenue from contract with customers. Okay, so we have to establish whether the transfer constitutes a sale before we can apply IFRS 16 to it. So when the transfer is deemed as a sale, the initial seller who now becomes a leasee has to recognize the asset from its books, recognize the lease liability, which is the present value of lease rentals. Recognize a right of use asset as a proportion of the previous carrying value of the underlying asset. Then recognize a gain on loss on rights transferred to the buyer. The buyer lessor, on the other hand, will have to recognize the purchase of the asset and apply the lessor accounting. Let's test understanding. Abico sells a building to Willie Cole for cash of $2 million, which is its fair value under date. Now, the previous carrying value of the building is $1.5 million. At the same time, Apico enters into a lease with Willie Cole, conveying back the right to use the building for 20 years. Annual payments are $150,000, payable at the end of the year, which is at the market rate. Okay. So the transfer qualifies as a sale based on the guidance on satisfying the performance obligation in IFRS 15. Now the rate implicit in the lease is 5%, which is readily determinable by Apico. So we move to the solution. Let's look at the workings. The present value of the lease liability will give $1,869,300, which is annuity of 12.462, which is 20 years discounted at the rate of 5%, the formula of which is shown on the screen. When you multiply to the annual lease payment of $150,000, as stated earlier, the right of use will be a proportion of the current value of the asset to the fair value multiplied to the lease payment. Current value is $1.5 when you divide by the 2 million and multiply by the lease liability, it will give $1,401,907. Now, there will be a gain on transfer of $500,000, which is the difference between the fair value and less the current value. Now, the recognized gain is the proportion that is retained by the buyer. So, it's going to be the 2 million, the fair value, less the present value of the lease liability, which is $1,869,300. Then, we divide it by the fair value then multiply it to the gain so this is going to give thirty two thousand six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars so the cash of two million which is the proceeds will be debited the right of use which is an asset will also be debited the building now that it's a sale will have to be recognized the current value was 1.5 million so we credit it the gain on sale attributable to the buyer also be credited then the lease liability finally will also be credited if you calculate the balances it will agree. Now, when we come to Willie Cole, the lessor, he will recognize the building, then he will credit his cash at $2 million. Subsequently, Willie Cole will classify the lease as an operating lease, taking into account that the lease payments, 6.5% less of the fair value of the building. If you look at the criteria for recognizing a finance lease, the total lease payment has to be substantially lower than the fair value at the date of exercising what it's right. So it has filled the test of a finance lease. Willie Cole will therefore have to charge the annual lease payment of $150,000 to the statement of profit or loss. When we move to a sale and lease back in the scenario where it is deemed not as a sale, the seller lease will continue to recognize the asset in its book. He will recognize the proceeds as a financial liability with respect to IFRS 9. Then the buyer lessor will not recognize the asset but will rather recognize the proceeds as a financial asset. Let's test understanding. Some young required funds to finance a new ambitious rebranding exercise. Its only possible way of raising finance is through the sale and leaseback of its head office building, 
for a period of 10 years. Now, the lease payments of $1 million are to be made at the end of the lease period. That is in arrears. Now, the current fair value of the building is $10 million and the current value is $8.4 million. The interest rate implicit in the lease is 5%. Now, we have to advise Sam Young on how to account for the sale and lease back and its financial statement. If the office building were to be sold at a fair value of $10 million and the performance obligation are not satisfied. So in this scenario, we have been given a caveat that the performance obligation is not qualified to be recognized as a sale with respect to IFRS 5 revenue from contract customers. So with the solution, the seller lease will continue to recognize the asset at $8.4 million and depreciate it as usual. Now, we have to recognize a financial liability at the transfer proceeds of $10 million. Now, the buyer lessor does not have to recognize the asset in its book as it has not been sold to the buyer, but rather recognize a financial asset at the transfer proceeds of $10 million. So, fellas, that is all we have to discuss on leases. I've been able to explain everything to bring it to your understanding. However, if there's anything that requires our attention or clarification, do not hesitate to put them in the comment section below. Also, that, can you click on the subscribe button? Hit the notification bell by it, like and share. So we'll come to you again by way of tutorials on the go. Take care of yourself and stay blessed. Puka, puka.